In this video, I'll show you how to build the player class. But first I need to explain a few things about classes. The first thing is, our program is supposed to represent something in the real world, or in our case, in our game world. In order to do this, the program needs to know what things exist in the world. If we were writing a program for a bank, the things we would look at would be customers, accounts, withdrawals, deposits, but for our game, the things are going to be players, locations, monsters, treasure, quest, things like that. For each of these things, we're going to create a class. This will hold the information about it. We're going to create some other classes in the future, but for right now, we'll start with the simple ones. So how do we find the things that our program needs to work with? We can look at our requirements and find everything that's a noun. Here's a list of the features we want to have in our game. And I've highlighted all the things that are nouns. Player, locations, monster, loot, quest, item. Those are all of our nouns. So those are all going to be the things our program needs to work with. And our program is going to hold the information for all these things in classes. In this video, we'll start by building the player class. So how do we build a class? One way to do it for something like this player class is to imagine there's a blank form. Back when I played Dungeons and Dragons 30 years ago, we had forms like this, and we would fill it out for each of our characters. This is kind of like what a class is. It's the outline of the information for the player. We know when we create a player, we need to have a name, a class, their number of hit points, experience points, a list of their inventory items, a list of their quest. So this blank form is basically our class. It defines the information that we need for the player. On the form, we have a lot of these different boxes for name, class, and each piece of information that we fill out about the player, that's going to be a property in our program. For this player class, the properties will be the name, the character class, their hit points. Now each of these properties for the player class can hold some information and it only holds a certain type of information. For example, level is only going to have a number in it. The same with the experience points, the hit points, and the player's gold. Those are all numeric values, and we're going to use those as numbers because we're going to add gold and subtract gold, add and subtract hit points during battle, but the name and the class aren't going to be numbers. The name can hold almost any type of information. So we could give it, for example, a name like this. So the name property has to hold letters, numbers, punctuation, spaces, unlike the hit points, which is only ever going to hold numbers. And it's the same with class. We're going to hold fighter in there for example, so we need to allow letters in there. For a property in a class, this is called the data type. It's the type of data you can store in the property. For the hit points, experience points, level, and gold, those are all going to be integers. They're all just going to hold numbers, and they're only going to hold whole numbers, integer values. For the name of the class, we want to allow almost anything so the data type for those is going to be string. String lets you put in almost any character. So now let's actually build the class in Visual Studio. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. Right now the solution has one project, and this is the WPF user interface. This is where we're going to keep all the XAML files. Another name for these XAML files is the view because this is the part of the program that the users see. The classes we're going to create now, like the player and the monster classes, those are known as models, or sometimes as business objects. Even though this is a game and not a business program, we still might call it business objects. 
but we want to keep the model files separate from the view files. This lets us do a few different things like create some automated test and also create different views. So I can reuse the models with maybe a console version of the game or an internet version of the game. So we want to keep all those model classes separate from the view. We do that by right clicking on the solution and selecting add new project and look for visual C sharp. Click on windows. And this is going to be a class library. We use this to hold our models or our business objects. I'm going to name this one engine. When you write your own programs, you can give it whatever name you want. But for this, please use engine in case you need to copy and paste any of the code from my sample code. Then I'll click OK, and Visual Studio has created the engine project in our solution. It's also created a class it calls class1. That's what it does by default. We don't want this class, so I'll right click on it and delete it. Now we'll create the player class. I like to keep the model classes in their own subdirectory. We're going to put some other files in this project, so I'll right click on the engine project and do add new folder, and I'm going to name it models. And this is where we'll put all of our models for our player, for our monster, for our location. Then right click on the models folder and select add new item, and I want to add a class. And down here for the name, I'm going to name it player. So we want player.cs for our class file name. Click the add and Visual Studio creates the player class for us. Let's take a quick look at the file that it created. At the top there are some using statements. Right now we're not going to worry about these. This just lets the compiler know what files we need to use. We have a namespace engine.models. So this is telling us that this file is in our engine project and in the models folder. This is just a way to keep our files organized and grouped. Then we have an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. This is how C Sharp says this is a section that belongs to something. For example, everything between this open curly brace and this closed curly brace is in namespace engine.models. Inside these curly braces, we have class player. So we know the player is in namespace engine models. And the class has its own open curly brace and closed curly brace. There are going to be things that belong to it. In this case, it's going to be our properties. Let's pull up the player form again for a second. So now in this player class, we need to create these properties. For right now, we're not going to create the inventory and the quest. We'll get to those in a future lesson. So we're going to create the name through the gold, these first six properties. And two of them are going to be strings because they can take any type of value. And four of them, the data type is going to be int because they can only hold integer numbers. Now I'll add the properties to the class. And here's the class with the six properties. On line 11, we have the name property. We put the data type, string, what the name of the property is. In this case, the name is name. And then we have this curly brace, get semicolon, set semicolon, close curly brace. The get and the set are ways to say that this property, you can set the value of it and you can also get it. So you can put a value into the name property, kind of like filling out the blank space on the form, and you can get the name value, which would be like reading the value from the form. Then we have the string property for the character class, which you can get and set, and then the four integer properties. And to set their data type, you use int, I-N-T. So now this player class has these six properties defined. Two string properties, four integer properties. And you can set values, put values into the properties, and you can get or read the values from those properties. Something to notice about the property names, on the form, hit points and experience points 
are separate words. There's a space between hit and points and a space between experience and points. When you set up a property, you can't have the space. So you need to put it all into one word. And usually for us programmers, when we combine two or more words together, the first letter of each word will be an uppercase. So that way you can kind of see where the words begin and end. And for the properties that we're using in this class, we only have the string and the int data type. There are a lot more data types we can use. There's Boolean, if you want to hold a true or a false, a yes or a no. There's decimal, if you want to hold numbers with decimal values, like 1.5, 2.7. There's date time, if you want to hold dates. And you can even use other classes that you define as a data type but we'll get to that in a future lesson. For right now, we just need the string and the int and the basics here to set up our six properties for the player class. That's gonna be the end for this lesson. Even though we only created one new file, there were a lot of new concepts that we covered. This is how you will probably build your own programs. You'll start out with a list of requirements then you'll look for the things, the nouns in your requirements, and you'll start creating models or business objects for those things. Each of those things will be a class, and the class will probably have additional information about the thing. In this case, kind of a blank form. That's how you determine what the properties are for your class and the type of information you're going to store for each property will determine what data type you use. In the next lesson, we'll take this player class, create an instance of the player, an object, and then we'll display that player's information in the user interface project. This will let you see how your models, your classes actually connect to your view, your user interface.